All right, now we're going to talk about an important concept <clears throat> that applies in single phase AC systems, which we call complex power. All right. As, so we've talked about this now. So if I have a general impedance that has a magnitude Z with an angle phi sub Z and a voltage that is given in the time domain like so and a current given in the time domain like so, I am now going to start to write, as I said before, all of my phasers in terms of RMS. So I'm going to say that this is V RMS with an angle phi V and this is I RMS with an angle phi sub I. And recall that I peak over square root of two is equal to I RMS. And similar for the voltage. Okay, so we're gonna write our phasers that way from now on. Now where that ended us with previously was that we said that the, the instantaneous power can be given by this expression down here. All right, we've talked about that before. I don't want to belabor that too much further. All right, now our definitions that we gave previously is that the real power or active power, all right, was P equal to V peak I peak over square root of two times this cosine relationship or VRMS IRMS times this cosine relationship. Similarly, the reactive power V peak I peak over two times the sine of phi v minus phi i, or simply v rms i rms times the sine. Okay, so we said that we could rewrite our p of t like so. All right, again, not too particularly important, but what I want to look at here is normally <clears throat> we're in an AC system. You know, just like when we we said, you know, we introduced in the idea of impedance, we said, well, we don't really like thinking about time domain waveforms. We usually like thinking about phasers, which allow us to sort of simplify everything. So we usually forget these time varying parts. In other words, the, the cosine two omega t terms and the sine two omega t terms. We need to remember that we're there, but we kind of forget about them, all right? So we tip, think typically about the real power P and the reactive power Q. All right, now <clears throat> by Ohm's law, because we know that V equals I Z, we know that, again, I'll do that as a, as a vector or phaser, that means that I have um, simply phi angle-wise, phi v equals phi i minus phi z, right? So if I look at that, phi z is equal to phi v minus phi i, okay? Just a simple rearrangement that comes out of Ohm's law. So if I look at p here, all right, so this is my p term, and this is my Q term right there. Now notice what I've done is I've, I've just used the fact that phi sub Z equals phi V minus phi I. Basically plug that in there, okay? <clears throat> well, if you look at that for a second there, V RMS, I RMS cosine phi Z and V RMS, I RMS sine phi sub Z, well, that sort of looks like a situation where I've got some kind of a vector going on, right? Some sort of a complex number. So it looks like I have V RMS, I RMS, cosine phi, plus J V RMS, I RMS, sine phi, right? That looks like the two components of a vector. So this vector here I've called S with an underscore. This guy is what I call my complex power, right? Complex power, and it has two components. Its real part is P, and its imaginary part is Q, all right? So let's say I have phi sub Z so that my impedance is in the first quadrant. So my angle is somewhere between zero and 90 degrees. So just to be, be clear, this guy has a magnitude S that is written like this with an angle that is the same as the impedance angle, okay? So let's say my angle is, is, is positive like this, so it's in the first quadrant. So I would say that my S vector is here with an angle phi sub Z. So this is my S vector, okay? My P would be the real part of that, so that would be down here, this would be P. And then my reactive power 
Q is basically right there. So <clears throat> if I look at this, sometimes people call this the power triangle because what I see is that my complex power is the hypotenuse, right? The, the, so the, the complex power, which is the vector, is the hypotenuse of this triangle. The, the real part is here. The reactive part is here. Okay. So complex power is the term that we give to this guy. And we say that this thing has, it would appear, a magnitude VRMS, IRMS, with an angle that is the same as the impedance angle. All right. So I'll write that as the magnitude of S with an angle of phi sub Z, the impedance angle. Clearly, though, the magnitude of S has to be VRMS times IRMS. We give that a name as well, right? We, we defer, define that as what we call the apparent power, all right? The apparent power, all right? So we've now defined th four new terms, right? I basically said that I have a, a real or active power, a reactive power, a complex power, and now I've got an apparent power. So I got a lot of different terms going on there. All right. So a couple of important things to, to sort of note about this. I, got, I can make some more relationships here. From Ohm's law, right? Ohm's law is V equals IZ. So, that, so to get the angle of this, right? The angle of a product is the sum of the angles. So phi V equals phi I plus phi Z. Okay. So that gave me this relationship here for my, my complex power vector. So if I use on my Ohm's law, I see that phi sub z is always equal to phi v minus phi i, right? That's just a rearranging of, of my Ohm's law result. So that says I can write my complex power slightly differently, right? I could say it as v rms i rms times cosine of phi v minus phi i plus j times v rms IRMS times sine of phi V minus phi I. Okay. All right. So why does that mean anything to me? So if I look at this result down here, okay, this looks like the result of having done two multiplications, right? In other words, if I had said that I have the voltage vector V RMS with an angle phi V, and a current vector with I RMS, in this case, negative phi I. So if I had those two vectors and multiplied those two together, right? If I took those two and multiplied those two together, what you would get is V RMS, I RMS, cosine of phi V minus phi I, and the imaginary part would be J times V RMS, I RMS, sine of the angle between those two things. Okay, so we we give this a name. So if you just you know you just all you have to do is carry this out here real quick to see that this is the result that I get. What that looks like apparently is. We, we have a term for, if I have a complex number and I, have, and I have the negative of its angle, we call that the conjugate. So it looks like I have V times I conjugate is equal to my complex power. All right, we've got a lot of formulas now, all right? So um, in general, the way we kind of want to sort of summarize everything, right? So the complex power is equal to V I conjugate, all right? And again, the assumption here is that these are all RMS phasors. Okay, and so again, we're going to use those exclusively unless we are told otherwise. All right, that complex power is P plus JQ. And there's our relationships that we've seen all along. All right, we express this guy as a, as a vector here. Right, in this case, my assumption is that my phi sub Z is positive. Now, it doesn't have to be. If I had a capacitive type load, it would be negative, and so it would be in the fourth quadrant. But the way I've drawn this guy, he's in the, he's in the first quadrant, okay? And I see that 
the angle of the complex power is always the same as the angle of the impedance, okay? And the angle of the impedance is related to the angle between the voltage and the current. So let's summarize this and talk about units because we've made a lot of definitions now. So we talked about the apparent power, which is VRMS, IRMS. We talked about the real or active power, which is VRMS, IRMS times the cosine of the angle between the voltage and the current. We talked about the reactive power, which is VRMS, IRMS times the sine of the angle between the voltage and the current. If I look at any of these things, right, V times I has units of volts times amps, okay? Previously, you learned that volts times amps, which is power, as units of watts. Now, because we have all these different terms, apparent power, real power, reactive power, we wanted to differentiate. If you look at the, the active or real power here, cosine of a number does not have any units. All right? So the cosine is just a number. It has no particular units. So even if I had you know, V of T equals V cosine omega T, technically we say the cosine part has no units. The fact that I multiply it by an amplitude is what gives it units, okay? So cosine phi V minus phi I, phi I is unitless. So this guy is a volts times an amps. And sine, likewise, is unitless. So I just have volts times amps. So the way we define this is we say that apparent power, we have this sort of simple table over here. Apparent power has units of volt amps, all right? That is the term we give it, VA, volt amps. Real or active power, P, is the is the power we really care about that's the stuff that goes into into real work right so if i have a 100 watt light bulb i have vrms irms cosine phi v minus five phi i is 100 watts in the case of reactive power we call it volt amps reactive or vars okay so we have va for apparent power watts for real power and volts amps reactive or VARs when we're talking about reactive power. And here we sort of summarize the equations as well in this sort of table right here. So I notice that I have my equations using my RMS values and my equations using my peak values, just so we can kind of compare the two of them. All right, so in summary, I've got these kind of key relationships right here. Now, one other, one other sort of important piece of all of this is when I have P equals VRMS IRMS times cosine phi V minus phi I. This term right here is also given a name. It's unitless, but this guy is termed the power factor. All right, and ultimately the power factor tells me something about how in phase the voltage and the current really are. All right. So I've added this particular, I've added this fourth uh, line to this table here, defining the power factor. And notice that, you know, the equation doesn't matter for that one, whether I'm using peak or, or RMS values. And this guy has no particular units.